Hey everybody, it's Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at Reborn OS. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. Also, if you want to follow me on my socials, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are down below. Reborn OS. We are presently at their website, which is RebornOS.org. You go over there, this is what you're met with when you go to their website. And it's a very good-looking website. It says, the most advanced installer ever. With Reborn OS, you decide what's installed. Pick from 13 different desktops and window managers, more than 30 option features, worldwide mirrors, made for you, made with you. So we'll have to take a look at that. That looks very interesting. Easy graphical solutions. You've got a kernel manager. You've got a package manager. Nearly unlimited customization. You can pick from 13 desktops, we already said that, tons of optional features, friendly community, and it is a rolling release based on Arch, always updated and never behind. And then the latest Reborn news, new installers available, coming soon, two new desktops and bi-monthly news posts, and made for you with you. And then you can sign up for a newsletter down here, and then their partners, and then some more news. But that is a pretty decent looking website. They got the downloads here. So you can download from SourceForge or Google Drive. You can do it by BitTorrent. you got the long-term support kernel, and they've got the ARM version. So there's a lot of different things to look at here. they got About Us. they got support feedback. So it's pretty interesting. Let's close out of this and get back to the desktop. We are currently looking at the GNOME desktop, and it's pretty clean. If we right-click, there's the background. Let's go ahead and check background. And I want to apologize right off the bat. Matter of fact, let me close out of this and explain. Right click if we go to display settings. For some reason, when I open this in a virtual box, it does not give me 1920 by 1080. So I'm apologize for the black bars on the side of the screen. I've got it to the best orientation where the full screen is up. So we'll close out of that. Let's check out the backgrounds. Go to backgrounds and let them load. Okay, looks as though we get one background until we actually install it and download the rest of the backgrounds. But we'll go ahead while we're in here. This is your settings. You've got network. Uh, Bluetooth, background photos we already looked at, notifications. Do you want lock screen notifications? Do you want to turn on do not disturb? You do that up here. And then, of course, you've got all these applications that you have notifications set for. If you want to turn them off, all you got to do is come down here and switch them off. You can shut notifications completely off, sound alerts off, notification pop-ups. It just gives you the ability to customize what you want your system to do. Search. Do you want the search function to work in files, calculator, password, and keys, and terminal? Or do you just want it to work in files? That's up to you, however you want your search bar to run. Then you have your applications, privacy, location services is turned off. You can turn it on if you choose. Your camera, what applications you want to give access to your camera. Microphone, same thing. Thunderbolt, file history and trash. And screen lock. Online accounts. You can come over here and put in all your information for your Googles, your Facebooks, Microsoft, Foursquare, Microsoft Exchange, Last FM, Media Server. If you want to log into those accounts and have them stored on the computer, that way when you start downloading applications that use those accounts, they will automatically connect and you don't have to worry about that step. It's already taken care of. Then you've got sharing, sound, power, displays, mouse and touchpad, keyboard, printers, removable media, color, region, and language, accessibility, users, default apps, date and time, and about. So we will go ahead and close out of that. Down here on the bottom, you have one panel. Starting on the right side of the panel, you've got battery, you've got volume, you've got internet, you've got date and time. There's your calendar right there. Then you've got terminal. Let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP installed out of the box, and they don't. Let's try top. Pulling top up. I have two gigabytes of memory issued to this machine. At rest right now, with the terminal open, we are sitting at 522 megs. That is fairly light and low in resources. That's good, especially for a GNOME environment. And like I said, when we were reading through their website a while ago, they've got 13 different options for desktop environments. So you can pick the one that you want to go with and roll with it. Do understand that if you go with a KDE or something that is a little bit more flashier and a lot more customization that you're going to be a little bit heavier on the resources. But right now, truly impressed. 500 megs at rest is pretty decent. So let's minimize that and close it. 
Down here, you've got Reborn OS Welcome Application. Let's go ahead and open that up and take a peek. Here's your Reborn OS Welcome. It just says, Welcome to Reborn OS. We are grateful to have you as part of our community. Below are some of the helpful links on documentation. You've got the website. You've got the Reborn OS Wiki. You also have the Arch Wiki and then Service Status. And then over here on Support, if you have any problems or any issues you might come across, you can go to their Discord server. You can go to the forum. They're also involved on Facebook and Twitter. And then if you want to contribute, do you have feedback on the operating system or feedback on the desktop environments? Donate. Do you like what they're doing? If you do, zip on over, help them out a little bit. The project and then about us. And then you've got links and utilities, install and uninstall programs. There's PayMac, System Monitor, Stacer, Hardware Information, Hard Info, Refresh, Pac-Man Mirrors, System Cleaner, Disk Usage, Edit Repositories, Customize Your Grub, Disk Management, which is Gparted, System Backup, Time Shift, and Manage Kernels. So let's close out of that. Reborn OS Installer. Let's take a look at it real quick. Try it. Let's install it. Let's just see what we got here information-wise. English. Next. For the best results. Next. Next. And then you just go through here, pick out where you're from. Choose a keyboard layout so they actually make you choose it. It doesn't recognize it by default. This may be different when you're not in a virtual box, but I'll go ahead and choose that right there. Let's go next. And here's the way you pick a desktop. You can just have base, budgie, cinnamon, deepen, gnome, i3, KDE, LXDE, LXQT, mate, open box, pantheon, UK UI desktop, and XFCE. So right there, before you even install, you can pick what desktop you want to run it in. I guess you just pick it. Arrow forward. And then and then you got the feature selection. Add accessibility packages. Applications to perform system maintenance. Arch user repositories already clicked on. If you wanted to download Chromium, you could go ahead and click it on. Dropbox, Firefox Developer Edition, or Firefox Web Browser. Free Office, Google Chrome. LibreOffice Megasync. So you can come down through here and pick what applications you want to install. And it will install it as it's installing. It is recommended to use additional cache. Of course, select cache partition. And then I guess you would name it and install it from there, which we're not going to do. I'm impressed with the installer. Looks pretty good. I may have to pull out a no laptop and try putting Reborn OS on it and just play around with it a little bit. I do like that installer. So let's close. Then you have Gparted, you have text editor, and files. Let's go ahead and open up files. And I want to, you can adjust your size here. That'll work. And this is files, I do believe. Which one are we looking at? 40.2. So that's the most update files. You've got your usual suspect over here. It's just clean, quick, fast, simple file manager so you can get things done expediently. Let's close out of that. And then Firefox, we already looked at. Let's go ahead and open up the applications. You've got Advanced Network Configuration, Arch Linux Kernel Manager. What's good about that is you'll be running the most up-to-date kernel, but when they do update the kernel, you'll be able to go, and if you want to update to it, you can. But that's where Time Shift comes into place, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Archive Manager, and then you've got your servers, Bluetooth Manager, Videos, E-Links, Disk, Decomp Editor, System Monitor. Let's see what the System Monitor says we're using. Resource-wise on the system monitor, it says we're using 1.1 gigabytes of RAM, no swap, and on the two CPUs I have issued, it's under 7%. It just popped up to 25, 9. I always do these reviews on two gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs because I want you to see how quick and how snappy the operating system will be on a machine with lower resources. Let's close out of that. You got settings, CMake, character map, calculator, extensions, file wall configurator, screenshot, cheese, fonts, firmware, hardware, locality, isotope, icon browser, image viewer, NVIDIA server settings, paste, passwords, pulse audio settings, tweaks. So it does have tweaks. Let's go ahead and open that up. You've got general, you've got appearance. You can go over here and tweak these any way you want to. So you do only have one background icons shell there is nothing picked for shell let's go yaru yaru light okay you can see everything changing down below you can see they kind of flash down here and change up a little bit then you've got fonts if you want to change your fonts 
If you want to make them big across the operating system, just come down here to the scaling and you can scale them up. Or if you want to change, if you're not happy with the fonts that are already on there, you can come over here, you can pick a font, let's go bold and let's select. And it'll automatically change that font across the interface text. Then you got keyboard and mouse, all the different settings you can change there, startup applications. Now, if you look in here, sometimes you'll download software. And when you do download that software, it will set itself up to auto start. All you got to do is if that application does do that, zip over here into tweaks, go to startup applications, and you can remove it. So that way it's not using resources until you ask it to. You got the activities overview hot corner. Battery percentage is off. If you look down at the bottom down here, if you flick that on, it'll give you a percentage of how much battery is left. If you want that there. On date, if you want the weekday included, you can click that and it'll tell you it's Wednesday. You can close that off. If you just want to totally remove the date, you can and just have clock. And then having week numbers on your calendar. Windows title bars, as you can see, it's got minimize, maximize. If you don't want those there, all you got to do is click those. Those disappear. And remember, in most distributions that you're going to deal with, if you go up to the window bar or title bar, just double click it. It maximizes, double click it, it minimizes. Most people already know that, but if you didn't, you learned something today. Windows, edge tiling, how you want them to set up, and then workspaces. So let's close out of that. So coming back over here, that looks to be that we covered most everything. Now, a while ago, I told you on Arch Linux Kernel Manager, if you're going to be updating to the most recent kernel, I recommend that when you do install Reborn OS, you install TimeShift. What TimeShift will do is once you get it installed, you can go over and you can make take a snapshot of your system. What it does is the first one will be pretty good size. And then from that point forward, anything that you change in your operating system, it'll just take a snapshot of that. And if you do download the most recent kernel and something happens, let's say your system starts acting up, apps start giving you problems, all you gotta do is zip over to time shift, refresh your computer back to a snapshot prior to that where it was fully operational, and then you know not to re-upload that kernel because something is giving your system a hard time. I've only had to do it once in three and a half years of dealing with Manjaro KDE, but it's nice to have if you need it. In a nutshell, that's Reborn OS, Arch-based distribution, quick, low on resources, loving the installer that comes with the OS, able to pick what desktop you use, able to pick what apps that you want installed at the beginning, it's definitely something if you're into Arch and you want something just a little bit more than XFCE or you want to give Budgie a try or Cinnamon or Mate a try, Reborn OS is definitely making it easy for you to do it. Run on over to the website, download it, put it on a USB, throw it in a virtual box, install it with whatever desktop you're wanting to use, and give it a test drive. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Before you guys go today, do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you want to follow me on my socials, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, the links are down below in the description. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.